Dale, how you doing this morning? I'm good. Ready to go. Oh man, I am. I'm absolutely outstanding. The weather is beautiful. You got a bunch of fans out here. This has got to keep you motivated. Yeah, it's a big old crowd, man. This is awesome. You know, I'm just going to start it off with that. You know, what keeps you motivated? And then I look out to, I can't even see the endless of people that uh, that love you. I mean, is this what keeps you motivated every day? Uh, the fans do a lot for the sport. They motivate uh, all the drivers, really, to get out there and put on a great show and do something, you know, do something great on that, on that day. And, uh, you know, so it's a, it's a pretty big deal. Uh, the fans are probably the biggest part of it. Uh, the drivers, you know, you like winning. You like that feeling of winning and getting trophies and stuff like that, too, and just racking up uh, a great career. And that's part of it, too. But, I mean, everything kind of lends itself back to the fans. I mean, they sort of fuel everything in the sport. I got to ask you, I mean, obviously, everybody knows what happened. You got the pole. You got to be in the back of the field. But when I saw you get out of the car, there was a different deal. It was like, you're like, hey, you know what? It happened. We're dealing with it. And you're like, let's just have fun, guys. And, and you know, it, it was great to see that, that 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 in you. And is that how you're going to take today? I mean, obviously you want to win. And, yeah. and is that what it's going to take is just go out there and have fun and race? Well, we're just going to go do our best. Uh, I thought we had a pretty good strategy yesterday and uh, just kind of ride around, uh, have some fun and uh, learn what we could. And I knew we would be there at the end. I knew those guys were all going to start wrecking near the end of the race. And we'd have a couple restarts to get ourselves back up in the front. And the last restart was on the front row. And, uh, we worked with Clint a little bit, and it just didn't work out uh, at the end, but um, we learned what we needed to learn and feel like we, we had a pretty good speed week. So uh, we tore up some race cars, though, but uh, it seems to happen to some guys when they come down here. I mean, it's, it's a different kind of racing, and we're all kind of learning what to do and what's working and what's fast and how to get the, you know how to get your car uh, cool and right and, and pushing guys for a long time. So it's a, a little different style of racing, so we'll just have to see how it works out. Daytona when you started and Daytona now. Totally different racing? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a, you can look at it and tell it's different. But uh, I like the old style of racing where you were uh, in control of your own destiny. And you weren't, I don't like being responsible for somebody on the front of my car the whole time. Because uh, you're worried about spinning that guy out, and then you got to get in front of him and then push you for a while, and you're worried about him spinning you out, or he can't see when he's behind you, and you can't see when you're behind him. I hate all that stuff. I just rather have to worry about myself and then nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you being a, a team owner now, um, has that taught you any more about the business? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, yeah, it's taught me some good things. I was glad I, I became an owner. Uh, you learn a lot about. Uh, the team and what the team means and, and how the team, how the driver is part of the team. And uh, I used to think that uh, the driver was the quarterback and and that he was uh, the most important part of the deal. But when you become an owner, you kind of start to see that, uh, you know, with what those guys that are going over the wall and the guys that build the car go through, they, they really put the most uh, sacrifice into the sport of anybody. And uh, you learn a lot about sponsorships, and uh, they're very challenging and, and difficult at times. And uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's a good, it's a lot of good lessons. You learn about what the value of a dollar is in this sport, and it makes you appreciate what you got and what you're doing. And, and I think I'm a better driver to the team I'm with in the Cup Series because of that. I think I'm, I'm more respectful and knowledgeable about what's going on. I have to ask you. Uh, obviously, we're at, we're at a big track. Do you, what tracks do you you know? It's one of your favorites to race at. Well, they tell me it's my favorite, probably. But uh, I like the short tracks the best. I really like racing short tracks, especially at night. I mean, that's kind of where I came from, and I, I, I you know, my feeling, my gut feeling is that's kind of where the sport was born. Uh, you know, Saturday nights around local tracks and stuff like that, and that's where the, a lot of drivers come from. So I like the short tracks and the race that goes on at the short tracks and and uh, I don't know they're fun. <laughs> I have to ask you. I know you have a pretty big garage. How many Chevys you own? I don't own that many cars, honestly. Uh, I don't have that big a garage. I just got a couple couple stalls over the house, just like everybody else. But uh, I got uh, I you know I know some people uh, that uh, you know Jay Leno and. Uh, Rick Hendrick and those guys, they got hundreds and hundreds of cars. 
And uh, I just don't feel like looking after all that. So I only have a couple, maybe half a dozen. And they're, you know, they're only special to me. They're not really, they're not really uh, expensive, special, important, you know, one-off kind of deals. They're just kind of cars. They're just cars I like. I got a Cam couple Camaros. I like Camaros. And I got my old pickup truck, and I got a new pickup truck. And they're not special cars, but I like them. There you go. Well, that's that's what makes it special, right? Yeah. Hey, Dale, you have to, you know, I was on your website uh, yesterday, and. Um, the Dale Jr. Foundation. Tell us a little bit more about that. I mean, you like to give back, and it, I literally got goosebumps when it when I saw what you do and what's being done out there, and what you do outside of just racing. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, well, I, when I was young and started the racing, I didn't know why, uh, you know, uh, sports, uh, celebrities, whatever you want to call us. Why we had foundations, why guys had foundations. You heard about, you know, I had favorite players and, and and other drivers that I followed when I was younger, and you'd hear about their foundation, and you're like, well, what does their foundation do, and what do they have a foundation for, and why don't they just give their money to directly to the charity that they want to help? And uh, and for a long time, that's kind of how I thought as a driver. But uh, you know, after some explaining from my sister and a few other people. Uh, I understand that when I have a foundation or another driver or, or sports figure has a foundation that he brings awareness to for, through his name uh, to the charity that he wants to help and it's a little bit better at drawing money for those type of charities. So uh, we, um, me specifically, I like help, helping children. Uh, we've... Uh, Let's give a big round of applause. That's awesome. It's just uh, part. It's just part of the deal. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we work with Make a Wish. Uh, we work with Victory Junction. Everybody in NASCAR works with Victory Junction. But uh, I enjoy uh, those two charities. Uh, we've done a lot of other things outside of that, uh, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. We've done a lot of things locally. I love giving back to my community, uh, the community I've spent most of my life in and uh, helping those around me that are less fortunate, that are, that are within the community is a lot of fun too. How about the 2011 Ride of a Lifetime? Uh, the 2011 Ride of a Lifetime is part of what, we kind of, uh, over the last couple of years, we've done different things with our charity. We try to do one big event and we did a couple auctions, which was fun. I don't know how many of you guys know uh, about golf or Boo Weekly, we'll have Boo out for a charity, which is a lot of fun. He's a good guy and uh, get a couple drivers, things like that. And uh, the auction was good, and we would raise somewhere around half a million dollars in one night, which is great. Isn't that awesome? Come on. That's, I, felt, I felt good about that, and uh, it was a, we were a viable foundation at that point. And uh, the last year, last year we started doing a deal where we're uh, auctioning off uh, rides in a race car that I'll take you around the racetrack in Charlotte. And uh, we're doing it again this year. It was pretty good last year. Pretty happy about how it went on. Uh, went on. So just check out our foundation uh, website uh, for information about how to uh, bid on the auction, or, or if you think somebody might be interested in, uh, in it, you can show that to them. Uh, we'd be happy to uh, have you guys out there. So it's a lot of fun. Dale, I have to ask you. We had some of the uh, Transformer cars here over the weekend, and. Um, your car is called the Wrecker in the movie. Yeah. Did you have anything to do with that at all? And, no. and, and did you see it? Yeah, no. I saw it um, on the internet. So <laughs> I know the internet, man. You know what? It is cool. That internet is cool. <laughs> did you? Um, are you gonna go see it? And just I, be able to I say, "Yo, that's my car." car. Nah, man. And I saw it. Throw the pictures on the internet. It looks cool. Happy to be uh, chosen. I don't know how to chose me, but uh, happy to be part of it, man. Yeah, I think they're going to be out here at the racetrack uh, taking us around in the pace cars. Yeah, and yeah. All that good stuff. Be cool. I have to ask you, what traits do you think that you've got from your dad and your grandfather when it comes to racing? I really don't know, man. I just kind of, when I was when I was growing up and going to races, I watched really hard, you know, what was going on and what they were doing on the racetrack. And I think that's how I become so, uh, you know, I, I became a uh, good blade driver was by watching my dad really close in those races and watching everybody really and seeing what was working and why it didn't work or trying to figure out my brain what worked and how he made that pass or, or what, what was happening with the air that helped him make that pass and why he used the car like he did. And, uh, but, you know, when I'd go to other racetracks, I'd watch everybody else too, you know. So I think I got a little bit, you know, you just kind of draw from the experience, you know. There's certain things that you learn from different, you know, different circumstances and they involve all kinds of drivers. So 
uh, I just tried to learn what I could. I, I didn't know I was learning. I was just kind of interested in what was happening and just kind of picked up on a lot of things. Do you find yourself studying before a race, like watching old videos and, and what have you? Or maybe like playing Xbox, you know? Yeah. <laughs> because technology, a lot of the drivers, I was shocked that they actually play the games just to get to know what the turns and what have you. Yeah. Well, I uh, watch a lot of, I watch a lot of the races sometimes. I kind of get caught up in old stuff though, but um, I got a, I, got, I ran into a buddy, well, he's a buddy of mine now, I ran into a race fan in Atlanta and he was on a Yahoo group that changes uh, and they share uh, old footage back and forth and swap it back and forth. And so he gave me a lot of races from the 70s and 80s, almost full seasons from the from the 70s and 80s. And I watch all that stuff just for fun. But I watch some of the most recent races if I need to figure out, you know, if I think a race, uh, like the Michigan races are, tend to come down to gas mileage, stuff like that. And you kind of watch those races from last year and see what guys were doing with their pit strategy and stuff like that. Um, things like that, but um, I mean, and I do race uh, on the computer, and I think it does help me. I think it helped me in qualifying uh, this week, uh, and the only good, you know, only only true uh, game, if you want to call it that, uh, that, that really helps you is the one is called iRacing, racing, which is on the computer. The others are just for fun. They really aren't that realistic, but uh, iRacing racing really does a good job. They laser scan the racetrack, so the racetracks are perfect and. It's the best place to really use it. If you're going to use something as a true tool, that's the best one. I have to ask you, if you could give Danica a grade for this upcoming year, what do you think she's going to give? Oh, I don't know, man. She's She did a good job at the end of the season. Uh, she got more competitive and uh, started uh, showing us some signs of some speed. She, uh, We feel like she'll be a good race car driver. She just needs to... Get to a point to where she wants, to, you know, she can commit to this full time. These cars are tough to drive, and the, and and the difference between the Indy car and, and our car is worlds apart. So going from one to the other is really hard. Going from back and forth is really hard. Just going from the nationwide car to the to the COT was difficult. So uh, once she can commit full time, man, I think she'll really start to uh, to progress rather quickly. But, I mean, she did a good job last year. I was pretty happy, and she did a good job yesterday. The, the race yesterday was kind of weird. You had to team up to, to stay on the lead lap, and those guys that she was running with, I was running in that pack at one point, and I decided to get out of there and, and get on. Uh, we teamed up with, I think it was a 16 car at one point to get away and stay on the lead lap, and those guys unfortunately got lapped. So it was kind of tough, but it's a weird race. Do you think here is more mental or physical here in Daytona this year? It's all mental. Uh, there's nothing to drive in the cars. Uh, they got plenty of grip. They don't handle. They don't get loose or tight or anything like that uh, by themselves. You know, you get spun out by somebody. But uh, it's all mental. And uh, pushing somebody around all day for 500 laps, man, it's going to be tough. Right? <laughs> I don't know what kind of shape I'm going to be in. Might need a, some therapy after this one. <laughs> Well, that brings me up to my next question. That, that brings me up to my next question. Just one, one last one. All right. What? How do you keep yourself motivated? I mean, you know what I mean. You're 500 laps. You just said that it. That was the first question. You know. I, I just, well, you're not. not paying attention. Well, you know, yeah, I'm just. I'm just you know what though? I don't think that there was this many people out there though. <laughs> so I mean, nah. when it, you know, when it comes to the track and today, I mean, do you like? Do you have something that that you do that just? You do like a, every track or like different tracks. You're like I have to mentally prepare for this. I think you just have to. Uh, I you have to remind yourself uh, what the reason you started driving cars in the first place, and try to go out there and recreate that. Um, you know, it's this is a lot of fun, and there's a lot of you know there's a lot of things you got to do. Everybody has a lot of things in life that they don't want to do that they got to do, but. Um, you know, the driving, the pure driving, the pure competition, the pure enjoyment of racing and competing against someone, uh, just getting out there and driving a car that fast is a, is a fun, fun thing. And you just got to kind of remember in your mind all the time, you know, that's what you're here for. Um, and when you get in the car, you need to have that disposition, you need to have that mentality. And because uh, if you get in the car with a bad attitude, man, you gotta, good things ain't going to happen. And also, I mean, in this kind of racing with this kind of drafting and stuff, uh, you have to try to remember to do things that, you know, look out for number one uh, and do what comes natural. Don't do things that are unnatural. Don't, uh, you know, when, you, when I say that, I mean like you know, trying to help 
somebody or going out of your way to help somebody, that usually gets yourself in trouble. So do whatever do whatever you think your first, first instinct is out there on the racetrack, and that's usually the right one. Dale, if you don't mind, they, they said it was okay to ask a couple more questions. Do you okay. mind? Sure. Yeah. There's a lot of fans out there that are listening to talk to me right now, and you talk to them, and there might even be a couple of young men and women out there that say, you know what, I want to do what Dale Jr. does one day. What kind of advice would you give somebody that maybe wants to do what you do? Yeah, well, I mean, it takes a long, long time to get to this point, but you got to start out somewhere, and uh, that might be sweeping floors for a race team in their shop. That might be that might be building a street stock for yourself. Uh, Legends cars are pretty expensive, uh, so I don't know if I'd go that route. Um, but uh, you can build a street stock and be competitive and go race at your local track for uh, five hundred dollars. Uh, if you have any you know me mechanical knowledge, you can rebuild the motor yourself and all that stuff. Um, but it's, if you can find some pretty good deals out there to, to build your own car pretty cheap. But uh, if you really want to go racing, you got to get serious about it and just do it. Stop talking about it. So you're going to have passion then, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just, you want to you you get after man, you got to start. you got to you know, get up and do it. So, uh, But don't ever give up, you know. A lot of guys uh, get disappointed and you'll starve before you make it, so be prepared. What do you like to do outside of racing? I mean, when you do have some time off, I mean, is there like the one thing that really just clears your mind? I mean, there, ain't, there ain't really no outside of racing. That's pretty much it. <laughs> uh, well, I know you said you have a passion about it and everything, and we all know that. But I mean, is there like that one thing that you? I mean, do you like to ride a Harley? Do you do you do you like to go fishing? Do you like to go hunting? Do you like to just go shoot your gun? Do you like to? Yeah, I like to I like to hunt, but I only go once or twice a year. I went twice this year, and um, I go with True X a lot. Uh, he's a real good friend of mine, a good shot too. So we go hunting together and we went to Texas this year uh, and I got a 170 and uh, he shot a 160, but he shot it at 368 yards, which is pretty damn awesome. And uh, I'm telling you, man, the kid's amazing. He can he can hit a dollar bill with a cross bow, or with a bow and arrow, but a compound bow, he can hit a, he can hit a dollar bill at 100 yards. No kidding. Yeah, he's awesome. Um, or 100 feet maybe, I don't know, but um, <laughs> he's good anyway, he's better than me. I couldn't hit the damn thing at 40, but uh, I only, I, only, I get him within, you know, 20 yards anyways. Right, right. How do you stay so fit? I don't, I mean, do you, I mean, do you work it, or is it just, that's just born, born like this, I don't know. <laughs> I just, uh, I watch what I eat though, I did stop, uh, I did start uh, drinking diet sodas and stuff like that. So, um, I don't know, man. Once you get over 30 years old, things get out of hand. But uh, get a little harder to control. Well, ladies, I think he still looks good, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Dale, how does that feel to be, to be one of the most popular, or the most popular driver out there? I mean, how, how does that make you feel as... Well, I was real lucky, man. I was born in a great racing family. I had a father that done a lot of great things out on the racetrack. I'm the first to admit that uh, I, I was born into his fan base to an extent. Um, I know that I did some things on the racetrack as a as a driver that that I got my own fans as well. So I think when you marry the two together, we got a pretty good loyal base, and uh, uh, you know our fans are our, not only my fans but the NASCAR fans are some of the most loyal in any sport. And uh, you know you talk to sponsors and tell them about why they need to come here and. All they need to do is come out here and see these fans and see how passionate they are about this sport. And it, kind of, it doesn't c compare to anything else. And uh, we're lucky. Yeah. One closing question. Did you see the roast last night on Speed? Or were you there for the filming on Tuesday? When... I missed it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I like God, the ones on Comedy Central. They're pretty funny. They are funny. Ladies and gentlemen, he's got to go. But let's give it up for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Hey. Hey. Y'all enjoy the race. Thanks for coming. Let's give it up for Dale Jr.